Welcome to the AEHR video training series presented by Information Technology Education at UK Healthcare. This video is video number four in a series of four and is divided into two chapters. The first chapter will introduce you to tasking in AEHR. In this chapter, we will talk about what tasking is, creating tasks, dealing with tasks you receive, ways to close a completed task, and different types of tasks that you may receive. Tasking is clinically relevant messaging about a patient's care between employees. It is very similar to a combination of email and a to-do list. The purpose of tasking is to either request information from someone or to request that a person perform an action. Tasking should always be about a patient. Tasks are part of a patient's legal record, so it is advantageous to use tasking rather than other forms of communication when dealing with patient care so that a record is produced. Every user with access to AEHR, except those with view-only access, is using tasking. So tasking can be used to communicate with other providers in your clinic, referring providers in other clinics, clinical staff, billing staff, checkout staff, call center staff, and more. To access tasking, click on the task section of the vertical toolbar. This will open the task list screen. Before creating a task, it is important to be sure that the patient in context who appears in the patient banner is the patient that you wish to create the task about. In order to create a new task about that patient, click the New button in the lower right corner of the task screen. Click the New button now to create a new task. Next, select who the task will be assigned to. Tasks may be assigned to individual users or to teams of people. Teams are set up by each clinic and are groups of people who perform the same job. For example, there may be a medication refill team that handles all of the medication refills for a clinic. If a task is assigned to a team rather than to an individual, you will not need to worry about whether or not the person is there to complete the task. Someone on the team should be there to complete it. No matter whether you are assigning your task to an individual or to a team, you will always select the user radio button. Then click the search button to search for the user or team that you wish to send the task to. Click the search button now. Then select the type of task you are creating from the task drop down. There are many tasks that can be created. You may receive tasks from other people with overbook requests, paperwork questions, billing questions, patient callbacks, and many other reasons. For this example, let's select callback. Do that now. Next, you'll need to select a priority for this task. Routine tasks need done soon, ASAP tasks need done sooner, and urgent tasks need done now. There is a set amount of time that a user has to complete a task. The amount of time allocated for a task is determined based on both the task type and the priority. So not every ASAP task will have the same amount of time for completion. The overdue date and time at the bottom of the task detail window will show you the date and time when this particular task will become overdue. Then type the body of your request in the comments section. You may use abbreviations as long as they are common abbreviations so that the recipient will understand. Finally, decide whether you want to create a notify task with this task. Notify tasks will be sent from the system to you in order to let you know when this task is either completed by the recipient or when the task becomes overdue, depending on which checkbox is checked. It is not a good idea to create notify tasks for every task that you create. If you do, you may have difficulty finding the tasks that you need to complete because you will have difficulty sifting through all of the notification tasks. But notification tasks can be helpful in some circumstances, so do not forget that they are available. There are at least three available views for you to see tasks. The My Active Tasks view is very similar to your email inbox. It contains tasks that are not yet completed and assigned to you. This is the default view that you will see when you first access the task list screen. Current Patient Active is a view where you will be able to see all tasks about the patient in context that are not yet completed, no matter who they are assigned to. Therefore, these tasks may or may not be assigned to you. 
Finally, Current Patient All will allow you to see every task about a patient, no matter who it is assigned to and no matter what its current status is. This is the only place where you can see completed tasks. Again, tasks listed here may or may not be assigned to you. Depending on your role, you may have additional task views assigned to you as well. There are quite a few pieces of information displayed on the task list screen. The P column displays the priority of the task. ASAP tasks will display a yellow triangle. Urgent tasks will display a red circle and routine tasks do not display anything in this column. The D column will identify whether or not the task is delegated to you by the system. An example of this may be if you decide that you would like to have lab results mailed to the patient. You do not care which staff member mails the results to the patient, you just want someone to do it. So when you identify that you want results mailed to the patient, the system will automatically delegate a mail result letter task to the appropriate clinical staff to complete. The task column will show you the type of task that was selected for each item. The patient's name appears in the next column. Be careful when viewing tasks. Each time you click on a task, the patient in context will change to the patient that the task is about. It's very easy to accidentally switch patients without realizing it. The assigned to column will show the person or team that the task is assigned to. When you're viewing the My Active Tasks list, this column should always contain your name because the view will only show your tasks. The Created By column will either show the name of the person who created the task or it will show System if the task was system generated. The Created On column will show you the date and time that this task was created. Next, the Status column will show you the status of the task. This will either show Active, In Progress, or Completed. Remember that completed tasks will not appear on the My Active Tasks or current patient active views. The ID column is a system generated number that you can ignore. The do column will help you to identify whether the task is overdue or not. If the task is overdue, then a red sad face will appear in this column. Otherwise, the column will be blank. Finally, the patient's medical record number appears in the last column. If you want to, you can sort your tasks by any of these columns just by clicking the column name. If you want to be sure that you are viewing the most recent information, click the blue Refresh button in the upper right-hand corner of the task list screen. Single-clicking a task will display the contents of the task itself. When you single click a task originated by the system, you will see important information in the task about section of the window. When you single click a task created by an individual, all of the information about the task will be located in the comments section of the window. Replying to a task is a bit different than replying to an email. When you reply to a task, you are reassigning the task back to the person that sent it to you. So it is important to remember the tasking guidelines and be sure that you are either asking for someone to do something or asking them for information when you reply to a task. To reply to a task, click the Reply button in the lower right corner of the tasking window. Click the Reply button now. Then, in the comments section, explain why you are sending the task back to the person who sent it to you, then click OK to send the task back to them. You can document the status of a task without reassigning it. This is helpful for documenting things like if you try and call the patient and can't get a hold of them. This will allow you to document that you're going to try again tomorrow. This can be important because the call center and other staff can access these tasks and view the status of them to update the patient if they call. This way the call center does not have to contact you or the clinic and can give the patient a response right away. To document a task, click the Details button in the lower right corner of the tasking window. Click the Details button now. If the task was sent to you by a person, you can also double click the task to access the documentation window. In the comments section, simply type what you need to document and click the OK button. You will now notice that the task remains assigned to you, but you can see the information about the documentation above the original task in the comments section. If a task needs to be part of a patient's 
reference chart because it discusses clinically relevant information, you can copy it to a note. To do this, first make sure that anything that needs to be documented about the task is documented. Then click the Copy to Note button in the lower right corner of the tasking window. Click the Copy to Note button now. The Encounter Selector may appear. This screen will appear any time that you are working with a patient outside of a visit. It appears because the system wants to know which visit it can tie this task to. If the task is not something that can be tied to a visit, then you should select New Encounter and select another option like Telephone Call or Chart Update. Then click OK. You will then notice the Note Selector window. There are communication notes available for every clinic. Typically, you'll want to select a communication note to document something from a task. The Note Authoring Workspace will then automatically generate with the information from the task automatically completed in the note. All you have to do at this point is sign the note. So click Sign and enter your password. Tasks that have been copied to a note will appear on the clinical desktop in the Correspondence and Administration tab. Also, the task is automatically completed when it is copied to a note, so the task will no longer appear in your My Active Tasks list. There are multiple tasks that you may receive from the system. If you forget to sign a note or verify a result, you will receive a task reminding you. When you receive these tasks, click the Go To button and it will take you directly to the location where you need to go to complete the action that will complete the task. This chapter will discuss verifying results using the work list in a EHR. This chapter will introduce you to the work list and show you how you can use it to verify results for your patients in AEHR. The work list is similar to the task list. However, the work list only shows items that pertain to orders. You will use the work list to verify test results for patients. Most of the items on the work list also appear on the task list, but these items are more easily taken care of from the work list rather than from the task list. Therefore, if you remember to always check your work list first and then your task list, then this will allow the work list to function as a place where you view results and the task list can be purely for administrative items like phone calls and paperwork. Both lists will need to be checked by you regularly. To access the work list, click the work list tab on the horizontal toolbar. The work list screen will show your patients on the left side of the window and the work list items that you need to complete on the right side of the window. In order to view the results of a test that appears on the work list, simply double click the item. Then at the bottom of the window, select the Verify button. Click the Verify button now. You will then need to decide what you want to do with these results. You have five options. You may choose to call the patient with results. This option will generate a task asking the clinical staff to call the patient with the results. You may also choose to schedule a results follow-up appointment. This will also generate a task for the clinical staff asking them to schedule the appointment with the patient. The mail results to patient option will generate a task to the clinic's clerical staff asking them to mail the results to the patient. The results letter will generate automatically by the system so that all the staff has to do is print it and mail it. The discussed results with patient option will allow you to identify that no patient communication about these results is necessary because you've already spoken to the patient about them. Therefore, selecting this option will not generate a task. The last option you have is no patient communication needed at this time. This will identify that you do not feel it is necessary to communicate these results to the patient so no task will be generated. Once you have decided how or if you would like the results to be communicated to the patient, you can choose to add a note to the staff or a note to the patient. Information typed into the Message for Staff text box will show in the task that is created for the staff when their involvement is requested. The Message to Patient Patient text box will allow you to include a quick note to the patient about the results that will print with the results letter if you have chosen to mail one to them. If you wish to verify this result and then move to the next patient with results to verify, you can select the Verify and Next Patient button. However, if this is the only result you will be verifying right now, click the Verify button. There are other work list views that you can choose to use. 
Order result will allow you to verify results and authorize orders. Order result group coverage will allow you to verify results and authorize orders for other providers who may be on vacation. Abnormal results will allow you to see only your patients who have abnormal results that need verified. You may have other views based on the clinic that you are in. On the clinical desktop, there is a tab for patient work list. This will show you only the work list items that exist for the patient in context. You may verify results for this patient from this tab if you wish. This concludes the AEHR for Residents training video series. Please remember that you must now pass a competency to successfully complete this course. If the competency has not already been scheduled for you, please call the service desk at 323-8586. This video was brought to you by Information Technology Education at UK Healthcare. For more information, contact the Learning Center at 257-9226.